Okay, you guys. Um, yeah, coating drywall. So I'm a little bit all blabbered out because we just realized that we filmed way too much content for one video, broke it into a bunch of videos, and now I'm doing an intro like for the third time in five minutes. <laughs> but seriously, um, yeah, how to coat drywall. Is that what this video is called? That's dumb. I've already got how to coat drywall videos. This is coating drywall in the nasty reno. That's what we're doing, right? We got all this stuff. It's just been taped. Uh, it's all ready to be coated. So, because I got a week of dry time here. Okay, see, I talk too much. I told you, I'm blabbing. I'm not working, I'm not doing anything. Why don't we just get to coating this place? All right, let's do that. We got some uh, finished mud here that I got to mix up. So that will be nice for coating. And <laughs> I got to keep this. I don't want to do it again. Nobody, you know, I don't have a teleprompter, you guys. Okay, I mean, want to leave this mud quite thick because this is my first coat. I don't want it to shrink a whole bunch. So the more water I put into this mud, the more it's gonna evaporate out and the more this mud's gonna shrink. So we want to just, you know, the bare minimum of water that I can actually work with it. You know, make it soft enough to work with. All right. So no, that's not bad. There's gonna be a few chunks in here because this was a like slightly used bucket of mud or box of mud that I found here. There's gonna be some crumbs that are gonna come back to bite me. You guys will see that. But this is thick. Because this job is so short, I can handle working with the mud this thick. Uh, if it was a long job, this would be way too much shoulder and elbow work. But I'm just gonna be using six inch knife, my baby, five by 12 curry trowel, 14 inch Richard's aluminum hawk. Simple. This could be done by pan and knife. I'm just not a pan and knife guy. Anyways, let's, um, what should we do here? Let's work our way down. Let's start at the top. Oh yeah, that's nice and thick. That's really thick, look at that. You can see it's like, I mean, it's falling because it was heavy, but now it's not falling much. That's really thick mud. This will be a workout. <laughs> okay, so this needs a lot, right? Like, look at that. You know, we got to go wide here. There's so much light on either side of this. So we're going to go real big here. I floated out this corner a little bit in a previous video to make it less apparent just how much we're doing here. Yeah, oh, that's thick mud. The nice thing about mud when it's really thick like this though, is it also doesn't bubble as much. Because it's so thick, the bubbles just can't come through. Oh, well they are there. That's because I'm going over dry con fill over top of paint. I'm just gonna live with it. I really don't feel like skimming that and dealing with it right now. I'm tired. <laughs> okay, more mud. Lots of mud. Lots and lots and lots of mud. It never bubbles over fresh drywall, which is really nice. Yeah, this is so thick. That should be enough. All right, now it's just a giant butt joint, but we're gonna focus on leaving a lot of mud right here and right here. Feather that edge, feather that like button if you haven't. Okay, and now I'm just gonna be working my way towards the middle of this thing. Oh, we need some more mud right here. I can see that. Oh, there we go. Let's go here. Working my way over to the middle. Doesn't look too pretty yet. Also doesn't look too bad, but I'm gonna leave it. One pass right here for the glory. Oh, see, I made a line. Need another line right here. There we go. Oh, this is thick. Maybe I should speed it up. 
This isn't Friday mud. Where'd that line come from? Man, that's sometimes where I get my six inch out. Now eyeball that blade for a second. And if you're really careful, you can actually flatten those out. Okay, now I'm gonna leave it thick. It's good, it's not gonna shrink. That's what we want. It's so thick, I almost wonder if it's gonna pull some of these corner tapes off. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, so this is the deepest part. I'm gonna put extra mud right here this time so that I don't have to put more on again. Like a moron. It's rude words, you're canceled, mister. I'm also canceled for talking like that. Amazing how many things you can get canceled for these days. Okay. Yeah, this mud's so thick. I actually never work with it quite this thick. But I'm just not in the mood to mix it up again. Got a little bit too much here. Something about this. All right, so now we're ready to try and make this a little closer to finish. So, working my way into the middle there. And this time, I'm not going to fuss so much if there's a line. Yep, see, there's a line, and I'm not going to fuss. And there's some big bubbles, and I'm not going to fuss. I'll maybe just fill those with quick set after I sand it if any of those are open. Right, we got this little spot right here. I mentioned in a past video how to take care of those short little 45 degree inside corners. We don't need to do too much to it right now. Alright, got this guy. I'm just gonna do the old side swipe. I can't believe we were planning on doing the whole day in one video. Uh, I mean, this alone, yeah, this is gonna take another 20 minutes here, maybe. Maybe more. It's definitely one video. Okay, so we need a little more right here. Because these little four inch ones are so short, you can kind of create that corner just with your knife, like I did right there. And you can sand them easier too, but sanding them is a different subject. Okay. I just want this to be nice and full. I'm gonna sand it down a bunch so it doesn't have to be totally flat. I'm gonna just live with that right there. That's good. Ta-da. Okay, now let's get do this one, huh? Okay, so what we wanna do is put some mud on it. Take a look at it. Put some mud on it. Take a look at it. Something like that. Okay. I'm gonna get some crumbs from this thing. Okay, I'm just putting lots of mud on here. I'm building out this corner a little bit too, just to make sure that it's awesome and flatness-ish. It's all about creating flatness-ish. This is in drywall. It's all an illusion. Creating the illusion of flat. This is. So this is something a lot of people don't think of. You know, when you're doing like a section like this, notice I haven't feathered out this yet. Cause this, cause this, it's all connected, right? So now I'm gonna come right here and I'm focusing on the edge of the bead, cleaning that off. Getting that nice. Why don't we do right down to the bottom? Because it's connected ishness too. Over here. That poly is super annoying there. Okay, wipe off the nose of the bead. There we go. It's kind of big and lumpy and wavy, and I'm going to leave it because I own a Festool sander. I can leave things lumpy if I want. 
Alright, and then we got this to deal with right here. So, check my blade. No, I haven't done something to check which side it is yet. Oops. Lift off there. One more. Alright, that's gonna be good enough. Don't fuss. Don't fuss. Okay, fuss. That's not any better. Then we got this right here. It's a little tricky when it's all connected. But you know what? It's a small job. You gotta do it all. You don't have time to wait for all these little components to dry. You just gotta do it. Be careful. Don't go into the work above it. You wreck it. And don't go into the work beside it and wreck it. So as I'm loading, I'm not going right up close. I'm leaving it back about a centimeter. And I'm gonna go up closer when I'm not actually loading it. So in this case, I might even take some of that off like this. So I've just dug into my work, but we're gonna save it. We will fix it. It's all fixable. Clean off those blades, especially when you're about to get into a corner like this. I'm now placing that in there very carefully, very carefully. We dug in a little bit, but we'll save it. And I'm trying to pull away from the corner right here now. You see I kind of pulled it down so I didn't gouge all that out. And now I'm gonna just play with the mud like that. Oh. You know, sometimes you just can't get it perfect. You gotta know when to fold them. Like that. Fold it. Done. Now we've got this big gouge right here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna just take my knife really carefully. I'm gonna go into the corner, but I'm staying out. About a sixteenth. About a sixteenth. I'm not actually touching the corner. So that takes a little bit of control. And so the little bit that's left over on this side can easily be scraped or sanded out. While we're here and we've got this, you may as well just keep coating it. So we're just gonna coat one side of the corners at a time. It's good there. Because when I do my finished coat, I'm gonna be able to come back. But usually I don't do the corners until the, uh, until I've already coated everything so that I can see how it's gonna tie in nicely and I'm not gonna wreck my work. But I was just already standing here. Clean them up if you've made a mess. Now if you hold your knife the right way, your knife has about a half an inch of flat space. You can clean off the top of an angle if you're careful. All right, we got this guy. How's it going, this guy? And yeah, I know I'm just gonna have to do more work here later, but let's just do this now. It'll be okay. Let's sand it down pretty flat. Now we'll be coming back to this after the electrical inspection and patching this, so no need to build it out too much here or at all. I'm gonna go right up to the corner, because like I said, on the first day of coating, we coat one side of the corners. Being careful not to hit my work up there too hard. Okay, feather that edge. Oh. We ran it a little short. You see that tape there? Need a little more mud. There. Sometimes it's easier to feather that edge with your knife. Let's get this right up in here. Okay, now bring my trowel like that. And I'm just gonna live with hitting this corner up here. We'll get filled in on the next coat. So this isn't perfect, but it's gonna get more work later, so. Let's not fuss too much. All right, I can live with that. That looks pretty good. We dug it out a bit there, but too late. Okay, oh, screws, hey. This one's not that nice. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put a little bit more mud 
fun there than some folks would. You're like, bam, the sanding. I know, this job is tiny. It's okay. It's okay. All right, now none of those are ever gonna come back and bother me ever again. This one will be nice and little. And we're getting close, hey? We're not too far away from being able to leave today. Look at those bubbles. Look at those horrible, vicious, cruel, disgusting, heathen bubbles. Um, yeah, so after I sand this, um, on my final coat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass over all those with some quick set and my six inch knife. Um, and then they won't shrink back. But yeah, it's like, don't even bother. Look at that. That's so bad. <laughs> those are so bad. Okay. Thick mud. All right, we've got this side to do. This time I'm actually going to clean off some of this quick set so that it doesn't get in my mud as easy. Nowhere else to put it, but there. Okay, and this is where, you guys remember what this corner looked like? Remember at the beginning of the video when I did all kinds of crimes against humanity on this corner? And you're probably thinking like, why don't you just rip the drywall out, Ben? Because now it's looking awesome. That's why. Because I had the vision all along. I had the vision. Okay, this all needs to be coated too. This little corner and all this stuff up here. And by this point, you should be starting to memorize this job. Know what all these little nooks and crannies must look like as well as I do. Take this down. There's some of those. Chunks I was talking about. We'll just have to live with them. We've got this nasty corner now. Take care of that. Sand will take care of the rest. There's that edge. I can live with that. And this guy still. We are still here, but we are getting close. Hey, this is almost done. Maybe I should just round out that corner. <laughs> Wood chunk. All right, everything else in here. Nope, it's good. It can all be fixed. Just leave it alone. Sometimes you just gotta know when to leave it alone. Did I talk too much in this video, guys? Did I ruin the ASMR qualities of all this drywall stuff? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Someday we'll make that video. I guess this just wasn't the one. Partly because, you know, I can tell you stuff about how to do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kind of create this line. Where I left off. It's gonna take a couple coats. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's also not gonna be that bad. And 
maybe if it looks really bad, I'll just decide to cove it out after all. I mean, it looks really bad. <laughs> but I got one more choke, one more, one more choke, <laughs> one more coat to try and redeem myself on. So much easier to use no coat on these, but it's also easier to have a nice straight corner first. Let's just try actually running the knife down it. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, it might be. sure. Looks good for my house, you guys. We'll make sure it looks good from this house by the time I'm done. Unlike those bubbles. Um, yeah, there was just a couple of screws here and then I'm done. We're done. Oh, it's been kind of a long day. I don't know how long that was. This whole thing. What time is it? Do you know, Brendan? I'll look at my phone. Okay. Yeah, it was like two hours. So to tape all of this stuff, um, get it coated, that was two hours while filming and yapping at the camera. So um, yeah, I'm done. I hope you guys got something out of this one. Um, and if there was too much chatting, I hope you just muted it and watched it anyway. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope your project's going well. I hope you're learning things from all this. And, you know, that's all I have to say. Um, yeah, this outro is about as bad as the intro to this video was, but at least we get the work done. Okay, till the next video, you guys.